Okay, a question that I get from a ton of you is where do I start if I want to start a podcast? And I love when answers are simpler than we expect them to be. So I wanna tell you about a resource that's changed the game for us with our podcast, and that is Spotify for Podcasters. If you wanna start your own podcast, Spotify has a platform that makes it so, so, so easy. You upload your episodes and then Spotify actually distributes it everywhere onto all platforms and even helps you earn money so that it can be profitable for you and a blessing for you, your family, your people. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit your podcast literally from your phone or your computer. So if you don't have a fancy setup, it's okay. You can immediately get started today. Then again, you distribute it to Spotify and everywhere else that podcasts are available. You can also do video podcasts, which sounds like a dream to me. And when you want to take conversations with your people to the next level, you can do Q&A and polls, all sorts of fun things. You can earn money with ads and podcast subscriptions, or you can just get started using what you've got for the good of others and the glory of God. Check out Spotify for podcasters. I use it. I love it. I highly recommend it. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app. I have it on my phone, highly suggest, or go to spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started today. You're listening to the Go and Tell Gals podcast, and I'm your host, Jess Conklin. In most of our episodes, we'll have a guest, a woman who is running on mission right where she's at. We pray this podcast leaves you encouraged and spurred on to go and tell the good news. guys, today is a fun episode. We've got my friend Lisa Whittle on the podcast. Her new book, Jesus Over Everything, happens to come out the same day as Take It Too Far. I love the message. I love sharing a book birthday with her. I love that she is a fiery woman on mission and she is down to encourage women from all walks of life, from all different ministries and backgrounds, and you are going to be blessed and encouraged by the fire and fervor in her heart. Enjoy this episode. Hey friends, we have a gift today and that we are talking to my friend, Lisa Whittle. Lisa, thank you for coming on the Go and Tell Gals podcast. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I feel a tiny bit giddy. (laughs) Now listen, you and I finally met in the flesh like a few months ago. Best day ever. I was so blessed. But you are like always my kind of girl. Like everything you say, everything you do, I'm like, "Mm, I love that Lisa Whittle. I feel the same about you, and I think it's like we sniff each other out, right? Yeah. So I, I was so excited to finally meet you in person. I think I was, I think I tried to monopolize every bit of your time. I'm like, please come sit by me. No, I really liked it. I really wanted yeah, to no. crawl on your lap and stay. <laughs> same. It was mutual. It was fun. Yeah, it was good. Good time. Okay, so if by any chance somebody listening isn't familiar with you, your work, your ministry. Tell us about you. Tell us about, yeah, what God's called you to, what that looks like right now in this season. Yeah, man. Okay. So what am I doing? I'm, oh, uh, it's, it's like the, <laughs> the you know, question we're always asking, what am I doing right, here? What am I doing? What is going on today? Um, no, it's, it's good this season. It's hard this season, yeah. uh, but isn't that life? Yeah. I am a wife and mom, been married for 24 years. It's crazy town. So I've got three kids, two boys and a girl, still very active parenting, but in a, a little bit of a different season. We'll talk about that later. I'm sure. Cause there's challenging times with that. And then I am launching a new book and Bible study, been doing that for a while as far as writing. So this is, you know, not my first book. Yeah. And then speaking and uh, got a coaching community for people who want to write and speak called creatives. And then I do a ministry called ministry strong, which is really near and dear to my heart. And it's really loving on leaders, particularly leaders who have, I think been in the church because that's where my world has been as a pastor's daughter. And just really understanding what that ministry world feels like when you serve 
serve there. So a lot of that, a lot of sitting in the bleachers, watching my daughter dance and do a play and just all the normal stuff, plus dinner and stuff. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Okay, what, yeah, what number of book is this? This is seven. Yeah, seven. Is that God's number? So come on. I don't know. Yeah, Jesus over everything. So (laughs) I love it. And watching from the outside, I have to say, watching from the outside, I feel like you've got a different energy with this one. You know, it, I feel it too, Jess. And you, someone asked me, like, what's what's different for you about this book? I think I'm just different. I'm sure you are a much quicker learner than I am or yeah. um, maybe just less stubborn. I no, don't know. No. I, okay, maybe not. But a lot of people are. I am really stubborn and it is hard for me really it's been hard for me in my journey to get over myself let god work on some really rough places in me and so for me i've been writing and doing ministry but struggling in some ways in in ways that i didn't need to i mean we all struggle while we do the work of the lord like you're not going to be like oh i'm now not struggling i'm now you know at this place and i'm just Mm. easing through it right but i think there are times that we make it harder on ourselves than we need to and in the past that's certainly been true of me Mm. and so i've let the lord do some real work in me and i do feel differently about, for one, talking about this message in a way I feel very unapologetic. Mm -hmm. I'm going to unapologize about putting Jesus in this title twice. Um, We need him so desperately that I I just need to tell us that there really is no other answer. And if, you know, secular media doesn't want to pick that up and put it on the local, you know, show, new show, I'm okay with it because I can't get away from that. So yeah, it is a different energy for me because it's a different, I have a different urgency. Yeah. Yeah. And they just are, they're different sometimes. And it doesn't, I'm speaking specifically with book launches, but for women who don't write books, like you feel this too in different seasons, right? Like the same typical projects you do, like some just hit you different. Some just hit different. And I I've like watched and perceived, okay, this is, this is something to pay attention to Lisa with. Like, I'm like, I want to watch. I want to pay attention. I want to like, because I know you've written multiple books, but there seems to be an urgency with this one that's beautiful and, and, and noticeable and remarkable. And I'm just really pumped about it. So what was the pain point that, that like got you to open the page to write Jesus over everything? Man, I feel like this is a message that I have been personally sort of watching God do in me for a while, for Mm. instance, well, I would say the pain point just to answer that is my life just not working. Mm -hmm. I mean, my life just not working, Jess. And, you know, instead of thinking, well, maybe I'll try to just buy more cute clothes, you know, Jesus going, well, how about you just put me over this? Like, why don't you just, you know, and I I know that that sounds super spiritual. Just, I just want everybody to know that like Jesus over everything doesn't come easy for me. Uh, It comes like gnarly. And, you know, I was like, I really don't even use that word, but it's like, it's like broken and snotty because from my tears, like, it's really hard for me. I am very stubborn. I am very willful. I am very hardcore. And so like, I passionately love Jesus, but I also love me. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of my life. And I'm not afraid to admit it. I just, I wish I could change it as easily as I can admit it. So for me, I think a real catalyst for me was when I went on a shopping fast. And I talk about this in the beginning of the book. I went on a shopping fast because I realized, and I was really embarrassed into it, which I I tell the story in the book, but it wasn't because I was so spiritual. Like I'm going to go on a shopping fast because I Mm. need to put Jesus over everything. It was, I got embarrassed into it because one of my friends came into my closet and said, you've got a lot of clothes. And you know, I, I realized at that moment, like, oh my word. And there were, you know, God had been showing me through a series of things, but oh my word, I, I am using this to numb myself 
because I don't want to get real about a few things. Like there yeah. are just a few things I don't want to talk to the Lord about. I don't want him to talk to me about, Yeah. you know, I'm not 18. I'm not 25. Like these are things that I should be facing by now, or, you know, I'm not unaware of. So yeah. I think the pain point was just realizing I'm going to either have to face some things and let God take over my life and let him do this stuff, or I'm going to limp along for a while longer. And I just don't want to do that anymore because yeah. I've got some real things on the line here. And right. uh, so that was probably it for me. Yeah, man, that's good. So one thing I love about the book is all the chapters are written with like one thing over the other choosing like one, I would say maybe one area that helps us choose Jesus, but yeah. like written in different categories. Like my, my personal favorite one is steady over hype, but you have other ones. What's, what's your favorite? Do you have a favorite chapter? Do you have a favorite way that helps people choose Jesus? You know, I love study over hype too, because I do think hype culture is something that we are, really inundated with mm -hmm. and, um, kind of swept away by, yeah. and it's what I call like a low hanging fruit, um, go to behavior that I, I don't even think we really realize it, but right. we're really there. And, um, steadiness is, it just does us a favor because hype culture has us behaving in ways. Then we have to wake up in the morning and go, Oh, did I really say that on social media? Man, I regret that. Or has to, you know, offer a lot of apologies and things like that. Not not that that's a bad thing, but like maybe if we didn't get so hyped over that, it would be better. I think one of my favorites is honesty over hiding because mm -hmm. one, that chapter was really difficult for me to write. There were a couple yeah. difficult chapters for me to write. I had to have some hard conversations with my kids. Yeah. I talked about some things I've never talked about before that make me actually emotional right now. Weird. Yeah. So one of the chapters, honesty over hiding was really hard for me because I talk about my, my time in college that I got really away from the Lord and kind of lived a double life. I just, there's, there's, there's a letter that I wrote to myself, but then there, I wrote, I kind of rewrote that letter to myself, what it would be like now when I have a little bit more language for it, but it's really for anyone who is kind of speaking to themselves about what it feels like to come out of hiding when you've been in that place for a long time, because secrets make us sick. Yeah. And, and I, it was weird just because we were, you know, we're going to give this sneak peek of the book and offer it to the reader. I was just recording my audio book. And when I was doing that, I read that chapter and we had planned to give a couple of different chapters for the sneak peek. And I immediately got a hold of my team and I said, we're, I'm making a game time decision here and we're going to change. And we're going to offer the chapter seven, honesty over hiding to the, to the reader, because I think it's going to be an important chapter for some people. And yeah. I think we need to change course and we're going to do now we're going to offer for chapter one and seven. And it was interesting because the very next day, an early reader that was reading the book said to me, I just want you to know that chapter seven is really something that I needed and told me how they appreciated it. So that's probably one of my favorites. Also commitment over mood, because I feel like mm. we are so driven by our moods and commitment keeps us when our mood wants to steer us off course. Yeah, that's good. I love that. I love all those chapters. Um, I'm so excited about the book. Hey, also, I don't know if you know this. Do you know we share a book birthday? We do? I have a gift book coming out on the same day as Jesus Over Everything, and I am I'm so honored to share a book birthday Aww. with you. I am too. That's so much fun. I've never had a book birthday with a, a close friend. So um, that makes me <laughs> excited. It's like double birthday. So I know me. it's really, it's a sweet little fun gift. And, um, yes. in the, in the book world, if you guys don't know, like gift books and trade books are different. So I remember one launch, I had a trade book coming out, which your book is, is a trade book, but you also have a Bible study with it, which is incredible. Yes. It's a beautiful double whammy. And one of my, my book birthdays, I had a trade book coming out and Annie Downs had a gift book coming out. And it was like the funnest thing because yeah. they're, they're just different types of books. It's like a fun day to just like cheer your friend on and celebrate with them. So I love <laughs> that we get to have a book birthday together. I'm super excited. So Jesus Over Everything comes out March 24th. This podcast is going to come out before then. So you guys will still have the opportunity to go pre-order it, get all the incredible gifts, but 
Lisa, tell us about this season. Like, where's the struggle in it? Because we talk to authors a lot, like on the brink of publishing or right before their book comes out. And everybody sort of has a different pain point in this season, like a point where God's meeting them. What does it look like for you right now? Where is he meeting you in in this season of push? You know, I, I, this season is interesting for me, Jess. It, it is there is difficulty in this season, even though it's a season of great growth for me. And mm-hmm. it's a season, uh, I mean, both, you know, in my ministry and in my personal life, mm-hmm. there's just an, a lot of neat things happening, but I think there's always both sides to that. This is, gosh, I don't know why I'm emotional. You're bringing it mm-hmm. out of me today. I feel like I'm going to cry. It's a season of change and it yeah. is a season of loss. When I, when my dad died, um, it'll be three years in April. I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom got remarried a year later and I love who she remarried and I I love the story and it's just a beautiful God story, but she moved away and she lived around the corner from me and she moved then to Texas and now she's a plane trip away and, and I've gotten to see her and, and it's wonderful. But I think I feel the heaviness of not being parented in a new way. Mm. And it's interesting because I'm grown right? I mean, I've been parenting for a long time. My oldest son is 22. So I'm clearly the parent here, but I don't know that we get over wanting to be parented. And my mom is lovely and we, we have a beautiful relationship, but she's not here. And I miss, and I feel the ache of not being parented in a way. Yeah. And so I think that's tough and it's tough on top of the loss of parenting as I've known it. And I would love to spin this and just, you know, I'm look, I'm blunt and you are. So, I mean, I know (laughs) I'm speaking your language here, but there are amazing things and I'm not spinning this. There are amazing things about the kids getting older. There are like places where I'm like, okay, you know, but I I think I had the perception that they would get 18 and then you were like, oh, I'm done. We did it. Wow. And it's not true. It's actually not true at all. There are, there's, some, there are some real hurdles and interesting places as you continue to parent really until they, um, I think get married and get on their own or don't get married and go on their own or whatever happens. There's just some interesting dynamics between even 18 and 25, I think. So I think the change, the loss, um, and realizing like, I I need God to parent me in a different way. Mm -hmm. And that's been a challenge because I have, I feel the weight of being a leader and, um, I need him more than ever. Yeah. Yeah. So good, man. I love that. We want these friends of ours, these gals to run out and make sure they get their copy of Jesus over everything. Get the Bible study. If you need something to go through with people in your church and your community, such an incredible resource. You can definitely listen to Lisa's podcast, Jesus Over Everything. Where else can people find you, Lisa? Where else can they be walking through this with you and learning with you? Thanks, Jess. I so appreciate that. And I mean, what an incredible show you have. What an incredible like ministry you have. I love the way you pour in it. I mean, <laughs> Oh, what a kindred. I, um, you can find me at lisawhittle.com. It has everything there. I mean, all this stuff on the podcast that, you know, speaking the, the books and yeah. the called creatives community and ministry strong. Yeah. I, I want to say that the Bible study, and I'm so glad you brought that up because you know how much I love teaching the Bible. Mm-hmm. And the word. I put as much into the Bible study as yeah. I did into the book. And yeah. I know you feel the same when you do your studies. Like I take that so seriously. And so I'm grateful for what we get to do with that. Isn't that the best? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Same. Whenever, whenever anybody talks about a Bible study, I'm always like, Oh, that's my jam. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the Bible study. <laughs> they get, they get so much less attention than, than people know, or people think. I love that. Okay. And lastly, how can we be praying for you during this season, during this launch? Mm. You know what I ask for all the time, Jess, anymore? This is literally the prayer that I I ask for people to pray for me for wisdom, because Mm -hmm. I really do believe that it is everything for me in this season. I I just, there is no better thing that I could say, please, please pray for me for wisdom. Yeah, absolutely. You've got it. Such a good word. We are praying for you. We love you. We are so grateful for how you're shepherding us, shepherding this generation and the ones to come with your words and your leadership. And yeah, we love you so much, Lisa. Thank you for being on the show. 
Thank you, Jess. How fun. Thank you.